the last class of the day it was Spanish. Mm-hmm. So we would get there, and it was also, like, right after lunch. So we would get there, and she'd want to take a little nap. It was really weird. It was, she called it osmosis. <laughs> and it was a recording that she had made probably a decade prior of, the, of a guided meditation in Spanish, where she went over the, the, the day's lesson, and then we would talk about it in Spanish. And it was kind of cool, actually. I mean, it, I don't think it worked at all. Mm-hmm. I don't think about it. But she would come to after this quiet period where she got to take a nap after lunch. And sometimes she would be speaking German or French mm-hmm. or sometimes mm-hmm. Latvian. It was really weird. That's a strange <laughs> sounding language. Um, and she said that she always dreamed in a different language, hmm. like every time. And sometimes she she would know right away that she's like, oh, this person is speaking to me in this language. And she would speak back to them in that language. I just thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, she, it's interesting. Like, I think Americans are pretty unique in their single language use. Um, I, as far as I can tell, most countries I've gone to, like, people speak at least two languages, not three or four. Mm-hmm. Especially in Europe, they <laughs> they speak like at least two or three. I saw, I think it was, I, lately I, I feel like I've been turning to Business Insider for uh, comedic entertainment, but um, there, it was, I think it was Business Insider, they were talking about how um, uh, third grade um, calculus scores in China are falling behind um, American high schoolers' <laughs> calculus scores. I think that was Onion. That was Onion. Yeah. Well, Onion, Business Insider, they're pretty much the same. Yeah, right. <laughs> Because I, I remember reading that one. <laughs> That's just hilarious. <laughs> oh, I think it, it, it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor little man Choi is going to get home and get punished severely because his dad doesn't have a sense of humor. <laughs> uh... <laughs> it's crazy I, I'm always of the mind when you have these kids like the little Einsteins or whatever that's a terrible thing for somebody to peak that early because they never go on to do anything it's like all any little Hercules whatever any any little whatever except for little Wayne <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. Any any little uh, or little bow wow that wasn't a rapper <laughs> that came out or you know it wasn't like they, so they didn't necessarily have little in front of their I name, knew but. I knew a uh, <laughs> like this. Uh, she was a math math teacher when I was in high school. But I think when she was a child, she was like a piano prodigy because mm-hmm. um, she had the most in incredible like you know she could play the piano i i remember like i walked into the auditorium in high school one day and she was just throwing down some classical music it was great um but she had this really severe hunched over piano posture Mm -hmm. and walked around with it too so clearly it's been a long time behind a piano or in front of a piano but she was also like you know had advanced mathematics degrees but was teaching in high school like teaching high school calculus. <laughs> um, and I think that's what happens is that like, you know, when you're really good at something, you're probably also really good at something else. But, you know, when you, when you, when people pursue things to, to a really high level at an early age, it alters their, I think it alters the, their scope for ambition. Mm-hmm. And, and it does it in ways that, like, it's it's really it's not the kind of thing that people I don't think people can you can plan for it. Like, no one knows that some kid's gonna be really talented at anything. And but I think all parents want to support their kids at, with their interests, and so they'll you know, they'll support those interests. And sometimes it happens really early because people are really fascinated by uh, young talent. Mm-hmm. And it always it always it's always like you know. 
some group of kids doing a cover of some really challenging song or some song where people like it because the song has deep meaning to them, even though that deep meaning to the listener is probably not, has probably has nothing to do with what it meant to the person who wrote the song. Mm -hmm. um, but then they see, you know, little kids performing music and it's like, my concern with stuff like that is I never believe that children have the, um, the emotional depth to understand what those words mean. Oh, of course not. And yeah. so it becomes um, imitation or mimicry. Yeah. Some kind of imitation. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, and this you know, mimicry is a form of flatter of a, it's like a flattering form of imitation, isn't it? Imitation. Imitation is a serious form of flattery. Yeah, yeah. But it, at the same time, it's also like I I don't. It's not real. Yeah. Yeah, so that is that's that's what I think the child. Although a child prodigy, from. math prodigy is probably the real deal. That's but that's like kind of weird. Like, <laughs> but even then, it's like what what do they go on and do? Do they go on and become master physicists? Probably not. Or or write a theorem that probably not. changes the field? No. No. Yeah, it's they like, they just get a lot of praise and they get a lot of. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of awards money goes to whatever program that they were a part of, and so a, a program programs like it because those programs get a lot of funding yeah. because they've got prodigal student. Um, I don't think our society is geared for that thing. I don't think that people want to work with somebody that everything comes easy for, for them <laughs> because you know because yeah. because you know people work hard to to excel in a field and you know. If you've been in a field for a decade and then you see some like whiz bang fly by night like success, Wesley Crusher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like it's like what? What's he doing on the bridge? Uh, yep. <laughs> and then he says something that's like that's not even in the manual. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But then at the same time, once you get a group of Wesleys in a room, they don't want to wait for people to catch up so it's a really it's it's tough there's some, that's like an administrative that's an administrative issue of, of but the here's the world. thing though what do wesley's know about anything that's the problem it's like they're so smart but they haven't lived enough yeah. to know anything about anything so then you have like this genius kid who fucking gets himself in trouble and like like puts himself in a situation where he like almost puts two two whole races at war because <laughs> he doesn't know anything about anything, and it's like that's the problem with like there's there's practical but he, experience and then there's um, intellectual experience, yeah, yeah. and it's I mean, like he's he's cool when it's like hey check out my science project it's a miniature version of the fucking uh phased matter array it also <laughs> right. it also does a tractor beam and a repulsor beam and this other kind of beam don't worry it doesn't get hot enough to cook you <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> but then you put wesley around a group of kids and he's like all of a sudden he doesn't know what the fuck to do or he gets in somehow somehow he got into like the 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 best flight squadron in starfleet Academy when he eventually got to the Academy and they were so good that they were going to do some some crap and the guy that, that played the, the leader of that squad he ended up being uh, uh, Paris on uh, Voyager oh yeah, yeah that's right he had an early appearance <laughs> on, on The Next Generation they had to do some kind of weird maneuver where they're going to ignite their plasma and create some fancy showy thing, but yeah. it was like a band maneuver, and Picard had to go save Wesley and prove that all this other stuff and Cause they're all little douchebags. Yeah, like. because so so he gets when he gets he gets advanced placement at Starfleet with the best freaking flight squadron, and they all want to hang out with him because he's got Enterprise bridge experience. <laughs> obviously, it's not because they actually like him, mm -hmm. and, and the leader of that squadron demonstrated that when he was ready to sell them all out. Yeah. And so it's like, clearly this privilege came to bite him in the ass at some point. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of privilege biting people in the ass, how about Jesse Smollett? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's like one of those, like, wait, they're dropping the charges, and now there's a state-level investigation into the <laughs> Chicago Police Department's, right. like, investigative practices. Wait, what, how, in what, how... I mean, cool, but what? 
(laughs) Now, this has been, it's funny, like, some of the conspiracy theorists were putting out the idea that the whole, the whole thing was meant to become a distraction for elections and get Democrats riled up for the, what was it, special elections or something they just had somewhere, I, I forget, there, or, 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 there was like some small election that was happening that people were trying to, conspiracy theorists were trying to link it to, which then I'm like, okay, not, you know, that, that sounds insane. Um, so then, I, I, I gotta look at the whole timeline where we're like, okay, the original thing that happened was believable in its original iteration. Then once you start hearing the details, that's when it started being like, this started to sound unbelievable. And then... Man, if they'd have just gone with the original story and not tried to embellish some yeah. shit, it, it probably would have well, probably would have gone under the radar. But here's the that, thing. That's the thing. It, it so the go embellishment the came from the manager. Yeah. So this is where the whole thing gets shady is like, nobody's talking about Lee Daniels except a, a few select people on the internet who, who are like... They're they're not conspiracy theorists, but as far as I can tell, they seem to be people who are trying to figure out what what's really happening and seem to be pretty bi- unbiased. But Lee Daniels, as the manager, is the shadiest part about it because he was on the phone with Jesse when it happened. When it happened, yeah. and Lee Daniels was the one that was like embellishing with all the MAGA, this MAGA country stuff. Um, Jesse didn't originally say that stuff. So this is why this is why I'm imagining Jesse got off is because the embellishment didn't actually come from him. So then the problem becomes when when you look at it, the public got presented all this stuff over and over as it was happening and never got a chance to sit back and say, oh, these things, like, the corrections never got as publicized as the, as the incorrect statements in the first place. So now all, a lot of people have come to this conclusion based off of information that was presented without being fact-checked in the first place, so they don't know if they were given the first facts but they're still ready to sit down on an opinion and and say I'm I I think he's guilty or I think he's not guilty in well, the sense of personally it's like obviously nobody really knows unless you were there yeah, I, a, I, you can only infer I think it really just highlights the breakdown or illuminates the the breakdown of the the journalism system mm-hmm. that we have that people are so there's such a there's such high competition to be first that anything that anyone has is put out there and if they're right then they get the bonus and if they're wrong nobody remembers yeah and uh but they definitely remember if you were right yeah they only remember if you're wrong if you really fuck up and you they commit like and that journalist commits like uh was a libel right yeah like with the uh kid with the um the kid that the, then that, that's now suing for a quarter billion dollars Oh yeah, the the uh, the with, with the, the Native American yeah. and the the Washington Post and yeah, that's a huge fuck. Up. God, well, it's only a huge fuck up because he thinks he's worth a quarter billion dollars, which is ridiculous. That's like, dude, that's another shut up, Wesley moment. Yeah, like, exactly. Shut up, Wesley. You're somebody not fucking worth a quarter billion dollars. God. Bitch, get out of here. <laughs> Get out of my face. Yeah. If I was the judge he's, that. Yeah. He's, he's, that, that, whatever that was, wasn't worth anything close to the value of the Washington Post. God, exactly. There's no, there's, there's no way the Washington Post is There's no Post quarter worth. billion dollar in, insult. Like, even, even that kid that got caned in the fucking Philippines, that, that's not even worth a fucking <laughs> quarter billion dollars. That, no. well, that dude was an no. idiot. He spat on the ground or threw his, spat his gum on the ground. You don't do that. Yeah. Or wait, maybe that was the kid who went out and spray painted shit. I think he was spray think, painting. Yeah. Well, you definitely don't spray well, paint. I think there was multiples. Now that I think about it. Oh I mean, yeah. I don't think there was only one. Well, you don't spit gum. Dumb you don't. teenage kid that got did some shit. Fucking, and got dude, <laughs> Singapore is like no, they're not messing around. No. I mean, they've got really nice stuff and they take care of it and they they keep that place clean as fuck. And 
they don't they show no mercy you know in a lot of ways like you know my hat's off to them because they've got a really clean place and it seems to be a very civil society that's whoa but they also they're also spending a lot of money for like talent and they, they bring in outside talent you get a lot of these fucking tourists that want to go places and act a goddamn fool yeah. and it's like it on the one hand, the measures are extreme, but on the other hand, it's like, you can't be going to another person's country and fucking doing that shit as if it's like, okay, just because you want to have fun. <laughs> well, ser- seriously, man, like, I feel really bad for that, like, auto warm beer guy who went to North Korea and took a placard and then got caught with in possession of the placard and then was held in prison for years and then came back to America, was released, and then died. You I know, mean, I feel bad here's for him, the thing, though. But he stole a fucking placard in North Korea. It wasn't just that he stole a placard. He was on a floor that he was explicitly told not to be on. Oh, really? Yeah, so my thing is, like, I don't know that that dude wasn't a fucking spy. Yeah. So when I'm, like, that's when, when, yeah, I, no, when that, I'm that, looking I at... Didn't, I didn't realize that he was on a... On a I, I thought he was just, like... I thought he just took, like, a placard off of the... The, the hotel wall. Well, okay, okay, again, it's not that it's okay for them to do that, but I, well, I'm fairly that- positive part of the story was that he was in a hotel, and the hotel is notorious for having this root, this floor in it that is for... Um, monitoring mm. so this room this floor is is used for government monitoring of people he was on that floor he took he was seen on camera so this goes along with the idea of them monitoring this like uh, this this place is being monitored we have images of him the story we're told is that he just took a fire and and got in trouble for that they didn't initially published the part about him being on that floor which everyone was explicitly supposed to not be on the floor no 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 joke like every, so when i when i was in china before i went to china my dad was like these are the rules and he gave me this you know thing to read like and it was a, it was issued by the the state department like these are these are travel rules or travel instructions for Americans abroad. Like, when in China, observe these practices. Don't do these things. Basically, uh-huh. yep. and you know, China's an authoritarian place. Yep. I, I mean, I, I like China. I think China does some pretty cool stuff. They also do some pretty fucked up shit, like humanitarian wise. But you know, that's like the pot calling the kettle black at this point to me. Like America does some fucked up shit too. So does Russia. Superpowers do fucked up shit. That's how they become mm-hmm. superpowers. And um. But I remember reading things like, you know, don't litter and don't don't spit <laughs> on the ground. Don't, you know, there are ashtrays everywhere. Use them. Um, don't drink the water. Don't do these other things. Like, uh, don't leave. Don't don't go out at night. Like, because you don't speak the language. Mm. You know, even if you could read Chinese or if even if you had, had an idea where you were going, like, it's just not safe. Just not worth it. Um, also because the tour, the, the type of tour on, you know, like good luck finding the American embassy mm-hmm. kind of thing. Good luck communicating that that's where you want to go. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's fine. That's how you, you, you do it in some places where you, where you don't speak the language, you follow the rules and you stay with the tour group. If that's the kind of shit yeah. that's going on. And if you're there for business, then you've got somebody there to take you to your meetings and then you pretty much probably stay at the hotel right yeah there might be a, a restaurant that you go to with whoever you have meeting well, with but but that's why in the places that people generally go they have increased relaxed, security and, increased security and relaxed rules yeah. so that it's like if you're in dubai and you're in a hotel you can act like an american or a fucking british person for the most part but you're still gonna have to dial it back but then once you leave the hotel mm-hmm. you gotta fucking abide by their rules oh, yeah. or you're going to jail oh, yeah. and that's kind of where it is like my, I think I, people want to like I've read that when you go to Dubai safari, like, they'll put you on a floor with other people from, from your country mm. because that way like if you do encounter somebody you like the chances of being able to communicate will be higher and those are some fucking tall ass buildings so they've right. got plenty of space to, to keep populations segregated oh yeah I imagine it's like that's like the that's like the complexity of integrating, uh, you know, in Star Trek where they have to integrate a new um, 
uh, society that's developed warp technology, and it's like, but they've still got some a uh, few like internal conflicts on the ground. You know, got to keep them separated <laughs> you know, until they work it out, because these two are both warp capable. But um, and we want them into the Federation because they both have some mineral that we want, so that we can do this thing with our science that they're not going to be able to do it for another thousand years. <laughs> but um, it'll be okay because we're going to give them uh, uh, antibiotics and blankets. <laughs> <laughs> I always felt like, you know, it always seemed like, it's like, yeah, the Federation gives people space age <clears throat> medicine and medical technology, but they don't give them really the means to do anything but use it. It's like, because the, the tools are so foolproof, mm -hmm. like the, 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 the tricorder or the, the, what should we call it? The, um, the hyper syringe thing that they use. You know, just touch somebody on the neck and press a button. It's like, Psst. like that thing. I'm sure they they show them how to use it and how to reload the thing. But I doubt that they're like, this is how the technology actually works. I mean, on some level, I don't think that the Federation actually shares technology like that. I think they do with other, with advanced species like Klingons. They where where the Klingons would like hold them to it, or the mm -hmm. Romulans, where they'd be like, you're holding back. We're gonna destroy this moon. Where you have all the research. Well, they they only share it with um, other advanced civilizations. Otherwise, it violates the primary directive. Yeah, like they can't yeah. give them advanced tech. Well, they can give them antibiotics. They always give them right. antibiotics. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. They can, <laughs> they can do certain like certain levels of shit. Yeah. <laughs> but they can't because otherwise they might alter the the uh, development. Of the yeah. Development but, but but once they're like once a civilization is warp capable, warp then capable then, it's, then it's all about trade, and that's yeah. usually where like that's where that's what I mean. Like they might have significantly advanced technology beyond a fledgling warp capable species that just happens to be on one of the galactic shipping lanes. Well, it ends up usually being like very specific shit. Yeah, like they'll fine tune something and then it'll make the warp core like three times more efficient or you know it's yeah. like little shit at that point where it's not um civilization changing well there was there was one um gene uh therapy something that they i think it was like they traded with one population to get Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's the, it's the one where they're, like, basically they were all opioid addicted, and they needed a special, uh, uh, they needed the, the cure to so that they wouldn't be in pain. Yeah. And uh, the doctor, Crusher, was like, I've seen this before in, in videos of Earth's, like, uh, like a, a period of blah, 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 where rampant drug abuse and all these other things, they look, they're acting like... They're they're on drugs. Yeah. You know, there's the, the PSA episode, <laughs> and, and so they synthesized like they synthesized a, a, a compound so that it could take away the symptoms long enough so they could get over it, and so they wouldn't need it at all. And then just gave it to them. They're like, we're going to just give you this. <laughs> and then the other people are like, what are we going to do? We don't have. That's how we made our money. It's like, well, you're going to have to figure out a new job, yeah. right? Yeah. That's one of the few times they intervene. I feel like <laughs> yeah. those bastards, fucking it, cosmic drug lords. Yeah. <sighs> Some things never change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But man, so um. Said you haven't seen Doom Patrol, um, but have you seen season one of Titans? No, I'm like halfway into it. Okay. Um, I started watching it, and then I somehow got like completely sidetracked and watched all of Legends of Tomorrow. Oh yeah. Like I was, I was gonna try and like watch, you know, just w start watching all these things and like, sp like, uh, not binge watch, but then I ended up binge watching so. Started rewatching Legends too. Um, yeah, that it seems like they're definitely. It's interesting because the show originally seems like it didn't sort of have a trajectory beyond um, the Vandal Savage storyline that was cohesive, but now getting back into the Legion of Doom. Well, that was interesting like, because that was like a direct 
Hawkman, Hawk Girl mm-hmm. story. Yeah. And it just happened to also include the Legends of Tomorrow. It's like, it's like the way that I saw it, it was it was it was basically Hawkman, Hawk Girl versus Vandal Savage. And also, here's these this fledgling supergroup that doesn't even know what they're doing, and they're really just on, on along for the ride because. Hawkman and Hawk Girl are destined to kill Vandal Savage. Mm-hmm. They will. They will kill him. It's like it's written in the cosmos, and then that's how it is. And so it's. It was cool because they they played the whole like played the whole the animosity that has developed over the generations of coming back, and then mm-hmm. they got they went back in time to, and they re, they explore who they are in different lifetimes Mm -hmm. and in different lifetimes you know like hot girl recognizes the new hot girl it's like oh you're me or vice versa it's like oh you're you're me and they talk about it and they talk about you know hawk man and how vandal took him or it's you know it's just it's like that it's like i thought that was really cool because i i always thought that their story was was just super interesting Mm mm-hmm and like I actually would have just completely ignored Legends of Tomorrow had you not mentioned that like that's actually a primary story arc, and so I was like, holy shit, this is like one of my favorite like DC storylines. <laughs> holy crap, they made it live action version of it. <laughs> Has all these people that I'm not really sure who they are, but whatever. Yeah. And then it turns out to be a really good show. Well, it's funny because then Adam turns out to be he's basically like the combination of Ant Man and Iron Man. Which, uh, I feel like they wouldn't want to frame him like that for the sake of keeping him his own character, but for the sake of making the show popular. So, like, when, what I remember about Adam from Justice League is that he didn't have blasters. I just remember him getting, being able to shrink and, like, do stuff. I, I, don't, I don't recall blasters. I don't recall. He him. definitely didn't have him at first. I don't remember flying. Uh, I just definitely remember, not at first. I just remember him getting small. Yeah, I think. Um, well, because they definitely changed his powers later. So even down to the um, the Goliath project yeah. and shit like that was, or no, that was um, Ant Man. Um, yeah. But um, they or there, there was something similar in in the Adam pro, or Adam project where yeah, because like, he got really big so he could fight that. Uh, that thing. Oh god, what was it? It's like season two or Well, three but or in, in the actual comics. Oh. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um But yeah, in 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 the in the show they did that storyline too. Which is like I think they actually did that before the Ant Man T V show or Ant Man movie if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I'm fairly positive. Well I it's in um in a there was a years ago. I think it was also part of that Lionsgate uh, Marvel comics or Marvel movies, uh, animated movies. There was like Avengers and Avengers Two, and the first one they introduce. Mm. Um, uh, okay, what was it? They introduce him as Ant Man, but by the second movie, he's Giant Man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because that's what he was in the comics. Because yeah. because he had he made the transition to like like they he, he was useful, but. He was more useful being mm-hmm. getting being able to get big. Yeah. But I think that there was like there was in that in that storyline it's Hank Pym as Ant Man mm-hmm. and Giant Man and there's a lot of animosity between him and, and uh, Tony. Like they don't get along well, Tony just wants to work with them and be, be amicable and, and 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 Hank is like, Fuck you mm-hmm. <laughs> And then uh uh what's her name? Um Janet is like just work it out. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's it's one of those things that I think that they were trying to communicate on some level that, like, the tension between Tony and Hank is because of Janet. Hmm. Hmm. Because, you know, Tony is a ladies' man, right. and Hank is, like, so into his work that he's lucky that Janet's really into him. Yeah. The kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense with their their timelines. Because they changed they changed it with uh, by having um, God, whatever his name is, Scott Lang. Yeah, yeah. By by, he's like the third Ant Man though. Mm-hmm. So so we skipped an Ant Man generation with his with with MCU. Mm-hmm. Can't even remember his second one. Yeah. 
But um, but yeah, like you know, we've we've skipped, we've kind of skipped a, couple, a generation, we skipped two generations to get to the, this this Marvel Ant Man, and I don't know. I think it's I think we're. I think it's fine. It doesn't matter. If, if people want to have a story with Hank Pym as Ant-Man, they can watch the cartoon version of him. Mm-hmm. And that'll be fine. Because he's good as, as cartoon Ant-Man. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's interesting that they give nods to the previous generations. Um, iteration in a lot of these. like They do that with... Uh, fucking the flash on tv where yeah. it's like j um fucking the guy that played the Jake flash eric <laughs> uh well him too yeah plays his dad yeah the, the actual the flash from the 90s series yeah. <laughs> but they got the 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 70 or the silver age flashes character in the TV show as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, With the hat. Yeah. That, that's strange. <laughs> God, what the fuck are they? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, what, I always, what I always thought was interesting about Batman is there's always a new Robin, and, like, the old Robin always takes on some new persona, like, because we get Nightwing, and we get that, mm-hmm. like, uh, that red mask version of, of Jason, right? Jason Todd eventually becomes the red mask. Red Hood. The Red Head. Yeah. Whatever. And then, um... Damien's gonna become something really scary someday, I think. <laughs> like... <laughs> um... Well, he'll become Rachel Gould, technically, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I mean. He'll become something really scary yeah. someday. <laughs> um... Yeah, because then there's the Arkham Knight storyline that was pretty dope uh what else um and they make fun of uh Nightwing because he's like totally not into being Batman (laughs) (laughs) he's he's all like Dick Grayson's all like Batman's full of shit (laughs) fuck him yeah They, get, they got that really well in the time Yeah, series. they really did. They nailed it. Yeah. That was, like, the best part. It's, like, good. They need to show that. That, like, they have... A, that they, they need to really, like, drive in that that they had a falling out. Mm-hmm. And that way, like, it... Well, it, that's where the Hawk and Dove storyline comes yeah. in really well in the... Um, in explaining how the falling out kind of sets up. And yeah. it's, like... They, I think it's it's important because it it really... It kind of solidifies like the the tension of Nightwing working with Batman at any point later on, and it also it also helps to like, um, I think it makes Night Nightwing and Batman interactions more interesting actually, because because it's like at the once we apply that kind of tension, then it means that their strange st- strained relationship is. It's like folds the dynamic of the battlefield. I forgot you probably hadn't gotten to the part where, um, did they Batman the Titans show? I need to catch up yeah. on the show. Good. Well, it's it's. Is it stupid? No. Good. Um, I'd be mad if it was stupid. <laughs> man, I don't even want to spoil it for you because I'm like. Yeah, uh, there, there's. It's crazy how how good these. I think the DC uh, expanded universe is like. Well, the TV universe is fucking off the chain. Like they they got that perfect. Where <clears throat> now knowing, I thought that Snyder was going for the Nightfall or the Nightmare storyline. Anyway, and now confirming that he was, I was like, yeah, I called it. Like, I knew that that's what he was doing, and the injustice, well, it was, uh, I think Darkseid killed Lois and not Joker, so it's like a slight variation. Um, but yeah, but that's just, that's just kind of convenient. Yeah, and, and, and that's where it, it, made, it made more sense for what he was trying, like, like, this is where, to me, the notion of all these people who were like 
oh, Superman and Batman would never kill and all this shit. Dude, Superman like, killed the Joker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Injustice, Superman, yeah. like, rips his heart out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is where I was like, if they were, that would have been fucking amazing. Like, and Bruce is, like, shocked. To, to like, Bruce is like, oh, my line. God. Yeah. Like, and, and <laughs> Bruce is yeah. shocked. And Bruce was, like, at many points ready to kill the Joker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he would never pull the trigger. With, like, <laughs> that, that, those frames are, those frames are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Like, um, that's like the most, that's like to me, that, that takes Superman to this place that's just like as mad as he's ever been at anybody for mm-hmm. like hurting anyone or threatening anyone that he, that he cares about. Yeah. What he does to the Joker is this like, on its, like it was so surprising when I, when I finally get to it, I, I'm reading, reading it and it's like, <gasps> Yeah. And then I look at, at Batman's face, and his face is like a mirror of my face. Right, yeah. And it's like, holy shit, I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but that, that storyline was fucking amazing. And then if they would have gone anywhere, done anything remotely near that on screen, it would have been badass, but people couldn't handle it because they didn't... They weren't real comic book fans and didn't even know Injustice existed. No, man, they want Joel <laughs> Schumacher's Batman. Right? Yeah. They want because, they want Adam West Pow Zip yeah. Bang. Because they never actually understood the character. That's what's funny to me is like all these people never actually understood the Batman character. If you don't understand that Batman's a fucking psychopath that was able to keep that shit in check, was always on the verge of becoming a serial killer, and is just able to do it because he had fucking Alfred there like that's the only thing Alfred is the only thing separating uh, Bruce Wayne from becoming a serial killer it's it's the only thing and that's that's what you know I, I actually believe that any of the times that Alfred had to swoop in and save Bruce's life if he had not shown up Bruce would have survived but no no Batman would have survived. Batman would have survived, totally. But Batman would have become a serial killer. What I, well, no, what I mean is Bruce would not have survived that experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bruce, yeah. The psyche of Bruce would have been disintegrated Destroyed. at that yeah. point, and it would just be Arguably, Batman it always point. was. Arguably, no, think, like... I, yeah, he was probably just a mask at exactly. the end. Exactly. That's, that's, that's the issue, is, like, what we learn is that Bruce Wayne is, is the actual mask, and Batman is the person that survived. That's, that's actually my uh, my perspective on all of DC, is that any of the characters who have lives in with the rest of humans... Are wearing the mask that, as a human. Their human mask. That's 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 what DC's them. storytelling makes it. Like, whereas, that, that's, that's what it's yeah. supposed to whereas, be. Whereas Marvel is like, these are humans, yep. and the only way that they can rise to the occasion is to put on the suit, to put on the costume, and grab the enchanted weapon. And, and fight the, enchan- the, the ancient evil. That's the core difference between DC and Marvel right yeah. there, is, is those perspectives on how the stories are told. That is the only difference, yeah. really. And that's where, to me, people who Infinite never Crisis, got that, Infinite never Crisis understood and Infinity Batman. Gauntlet were the same thing to me, really. Basically. I mean, they had, they had slightly different rules, but <clears throat> it's, but essentially it, it, it imposed this kind of subset of, of challenges that's like... This is this. You're now locked in a continuum, fighting for the for the the balance of time and existence mm-hmm. with with something that you don't trust that may obliterate you, wipe you off the face of existence. And every time it comes, it's going to come back around because it's actually a continuum. Yep. And just it's just somebody else like riding. Well, but it's the, the hero's mantle. journey, well, and of course. That's, and that's like you know, when we get back to the Joseph Campbell understanding of the hero's journey. Um, then it all becomes clear where all, you know how how all these stories are constructed when yeah. they're done correctly. Um, they're all following the same path, and then to, um, <laughs> the same beats and everything. And to, to 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 destroy the monster, you have to become the monster. Even then, okay, so then, this uh, is why Captain Marvel, to me, is like setting up a, an amazing new phase because it's like if this is the beginning of like we have to think of this as the our introduction to Captain Marvel and when we first got introduced to Iron Man Iron Man the the level of villains we were 
looking against was so low that we can't go back to that. Afghani terrorists? We can't go back to uh, Afghani, Obadiah. Yeah, I know, Afghani terrorists. Right. That's, like, that's, that, that's that was level. heavy shit back then. Exactly. But now, oh god, it's so, inter, inter, interdimensional time hopping warrior shit. So my thing is, when we've gotten our hero ramped up on the last battle against Thanos, we're one, now we're ramping it up. We're one eyeball away from Rune King Hulk. All <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, <laughs> so what I think we're we're about to get. So we have to do the prof- we have to do the pro- the progression though. We got to get Professor Hulk first. Yeah. Then we can get World War Hulk potentially or Planet Hulk. Like uh, they kind of did Planet Hulk. Kind of, but they didn't really do it. We only got one battle, and that's I, why. Or, or do you think we're gonna? That's that's where I Beta can't... Ray Bill. Like that's what I'm saying. We Beta may Ray get Bill. a whole. So awesome. A like new, new. we may still get Beta Ray Bill with Planet Hulk. So what if? Um, what if? In, what if instead of a? New, what if? What if instead of a new Thor, we just get Beta Ray Bill instead of New Thor? And and well, but we, we already know Beta Ray Bill exists. I know. Like, well, because I'm saying like, but we so, don't. We don't know where he's at. If he's alive or dead. Yeah. So for him to show, like, the thing is, we as far as we know, we Beta Ray Bill and um, Thor have not yet met. So there's no reason yeah, for him. Well, they'd have to meet on on Planet Hulk. Right. Um, and that didn't happen, as far as we know. But the, well, because he his face was on the um, on the tower. Yeah, yeah. So it's like... He'd already been there. Yeah, and, and it seems like it's, it's been a long time ago. And since uh, the Grandmaster was a Celestial, or is a Celestial, like, he, he who knows how long... It could have been thousand thousand years past, like, a couple yeah, thousand. Well, um, so, well the, the, the Devil's Anus was, like, the output of a black hole, right? Yeah. So time is different on a black hole world they were there in the in the. I mean, it was like what a twenty thirty minute sequence when they were on that on that planet before yeah. they left. Twenty thirty minutes on that planet before they decided to leave that black hole <laughs> world probably translates to no no twenty thirty minutes of t- our time watching is probably like almost no not thousands probably like ten. 10, 10 to fifteen years. Well, well, we can we can tell exactly how long because it's like it was the duration. Because uh, Loki was gone for like he can't, he fell out of the stream like a second before and he was there for two weeks, right? Yeah, I think it was. About, it was it was like bam, bam. Yeah, and so because he was there long enough to have like made connections and. So let's see. Two weeks is let's see, how many? There's a uh, thirty-six hundred seconds in a uh, in the hour, right? And then times twelve. Well, because that's that's why when they were when um, Banner got back, as lo- as long as it's not Loki, when they were like, how long are we? When he was trying to figure out how long he was gone, they were like two years. Um, he didn't know it had been two years, so he didn't he didn't know. Well, because he was stuck in Hulk at the same time, but his perception was clearly off of how long it had passed. No, that's 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 what I mean. Like I think that like it's it's we it's can't, not passing at the same time we, right yeah, yeah that so we can't it's we it's it's actually more accurate to take the reading from the time that the difference in time experienced by loki being there and and when they both left the the uh, the the bifrost cuz they leave the bifrost at 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 slightly different times and then Loki's been there for some period of time when Thor finally shows up. Yeah. So that's how we calculate. We calculate the the the, the gap in time between when when they so lose the Bifrost. So it's longer in in the Grandmaster on, world. Yeah. And so whatever the that so one. So there's dilation that makes time like a second, a minute longer, or whatever. So one second in uh, or, one second difference yielded like two weeks, right? Because yeah. he was there for a couple of weeks, is what he said. Or maybe like let's say an hour or. Well, he, they fell out of the Bifrost 
like a few seconds apart. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, it was a few seconds. Yeah, so, yeah. so whatever a few seconds is equal to two weeks, uh, however much time passed between when Loki arrived and when Hulk arrived. So when Loki arrives, it's because he left first, and then the, that amount of time to when Hulk arrives. Right. So then, yeah. There's some kind of. There's there's some kind so, of. So, so two years, there could have been. Um. Holy like a month shit. in the real world. Or wait, no, 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 no. Two years in our time. Our time was like years, yeah, decades, year, decades there. Yeah. So he was really there. He was there for a while. So, so Beta Ray Bill is already come and gone. Yeah, because his face was already up on the, right. the hero's yeah. mantle. Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So, but that that doesn't mean that again a, a Scarlet Witch universe alteration can't bring him in at some point. So, if one second equals roughly two weeks, that means one, it's one second to um, yields 1,209,600 seconds in Grandmaster World. So, if the, and, um, so then it's uh, 3,600 times 3,600 no, 3, times 24 times 365 to get one year he was gone for two years so then that times two times 1.2 million whatever yields how many well but that that's seconds still right yeah I was, that's all I kept it in seconds I thought I started in seconds with the to get to a year 3600 to an hour uh, times 24 to get to the day times 365 to get the year times two to get to the two years that he was missing from Earth. And that yields real time seconds. And then we multiply by one point two million to get to the to to the grandmaster factor. It can't be right. No? It can't be right. Cause then he they both would have aged way too much. Cause Thor is only he's like thirteen hundred, not only He's, he's like 1300. <laughs> um, so we wouldn't have noticed it. We wouldn't notice it. But with Banner him. would have noticed it. Well, even. Well, no, because he was, he was the yeah. Hulk the whole time. And the Hulk is regenerative capabilities yeah. are like beyond Maybe. imagine. So, so if he'd never come <laughs> out of it, like. But Valkyrie would have done it. Valkyrie's not. She's not. She's, she's Asgardian. Asgardian, but she's not a god. But she's Asgardian. But she's not a god. They still age, yeah. like, because it's like the the Asgardian people are just basically people. Otherwise, they would have been all fighting the same way as the store. Yeah. So that's kind of where it is. Like they were. Mm. So so okay. So 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 there's some 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 minor issues with the time dilation. But the time dilation is legit because they tell us that it happens. Oh, totally. So we just so maybe maybe the two years that he's gone. Maybe, hmm, maybe the planet's orbit around the black hole is elliptical, and when th when uh, Thor, or no, when Hulk arrived, it's it was on the long swing when time would be slowing down, mm. or no, would no, no, I'm sorry, it's when it's yeah, time's going around it and slowing down because it's far away, and then it's swinging back around when the rest of the story picks up. Maybe there's something weird going on like that. I feel like they would have made it fixed just be well. I realize that that's a really complicated and convoluted no. explanation, but that's like that, there's, there's there's something there's, with Red Skull. Oh, in the that has probably to do with this that we are missing because our times are not accurate. Yeah. Like, if we had so if it was more like it's probably more like one second to one day. Yeah. Like he may have been there for a day, not two weeks. Yeah. So Loki also lies about everything, so it's not sure, like we yeah. can trust him when he says he's been anywhere for any period of right, time. Yeah. <laughs> so again, that's where that's where it is. Like, I mean, the issue is because when when Red Skull is transported away, we assume we originally assumed he was dead. Um. So this this to me, when you're like, when you've nailed upon this time dilation issue going in this place I think that's something that we we weren't supposed to notice at first but it 
astute people picked up on yeah, as like, to like how um, all these things are happening. Because like that way, I mean, if if there's time dilation going on 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 Planet Hulk, then all that entire experience can happen for Hulk. Like he could be there for a hundred years if he never turned right. into a banner. Right. He could be there for a hundred years and come back to Earth and have been gone for like you know a couple of weeks. Yeah, exactly. And that and that 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 way we really can compartmentalize that entire experience as like it's almost a standalone Hulk universe story, but it can still come back to Earth whenever it wants to. Mm-hmm. I really wish that they'd have done more with the Planet Hulk storyline instead yeah. of just like. Thor showing up and, and getting knocked out. Which is why I hopefully, like I said, hopefully that was just a glimpse of the planet to set it up so then we actually get a Planet Hulk movie, which could you know, maybe he goes back there Wh- whichever way, either they show what happened there during the episode or he goes back for whatever reason um, because there's like multiple ways they could go about it like yeah, they oh, you flashback know, story. Th- what they could do, well Oh, they kind of did that already. They exiled him the first time, which was like, I th- it, it was kind of miss. You kind of missed it. Yeah. Like that. That's why he was there in the first. Like, the whole reason he was on that planet is because the, the Avengers were. <laughs> okay, so, so this is actually quite ludicrous. Um, but it would work. Uh, so, Banner actually has really serious problems. He can only become the Hulk like. W- under certain conditions, mm-hmm. and they're and they're going to reveal those conditions in Endgame. But after Endgame, if he can't go back to being the Hulk again, and then so they take him to Professor Xavier, and then they reveal what happened in Planet Hulk. Mm. <laughs> you know, this, uh, <laughs> this is a really roundabout way to have a flashback. Well, but fucking um, what's her name? Uh, Scarlet Witch could do that because that's that's true. That's a Thor. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Then they just have Scarlet Witch like do her. Or her yeah. magic and reveal what happened on Planet Hulk, and then then it's all kind. Of, except they don't really end it right because he escapes. He's not supposed to escape like that. Right, which is why I'm thinking maybe they are just setting it up to oh, actually happen again. What if the what if he just he just goes and kidnaps the Hulk because he wants the Hulk back? <clears throat> they took my Hulk. Bring me my Hulk back. <laughs> that, that's what, I can see Jeff Goldblum saying that. Like, bring me my Hulk back. Yeah. And puts the, the control thing back in him, and yeah. so he can't turn back into Banner. Yeah, maybe that's I mean, the reason he doesn't turn back into the Hulk is because he was like he had got stuck as Hulk for so long. Mm. He's just tired. He's like, no, no. <laughs> they, they said um, it's because he got hit so hard. No, they they said that it was because him and Hulk are anti- um, have an antagonistic relationship, and he's tired of saving Banner. And only being there to be Banner's savior, so it's like that's why that's what mm. they were saying. But then there's also the the idea that Loki is actually Banner the entire time, so he can't he can't turn into Hulk because he's not actually. That's one that's one fan theory, um, but the the Feige explanation makes more sense in the in the real you know. What what actually happened? Yeah, but that also sets up Professor Hulk storyline. Um, when he you know gets more intelligent control over it, so if they're if they're or they're working together basically, so um, I really want um, what's his name to to go all Red Hulk, the 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 general. I want him to like finally get a, a get the machine online and, and like be like fed up with with all the, uh, the um, what's his name the fucking war machine. He's tired of war machine. He's tired of Tony. He's tired of all their bullshit. He's 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 just tired of all the crap that they put him through. You know they, he gets them they uh, and puts them in that freaking in a prison. They break out. Mm-hmm. He buries him in that other prison mm-hmm. where they that they reserve for the Gamma Beasts. He, they, someone breaks him out. Like he's just had enough, so he goes Red Hulk. That's what I'd like. Well, it was um, what the fuck was his name? They had a different name for him 
in the in the first like oh the Tim abomination B yeah well the abomination's a different gamma beast oh yeah 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 for yeah. sure for sure and so but I want more of them but yeah. that's uh, that was they had that guy well, Tim Roth played the guy that turned into the abomination yeah I, I liked him as a character I, I like him as a as a, a I like him in general as an actor. I think he's got a pretty diverse skill set. Like between um, any of the roles he's had with the you know, Quentin Tarantino movie mm -hmm. and and his role in Hulk, like like that dude's got some chops. I think he's good when he's angry. <laughs> yeah, I think it's about time for they. They've got the CGI pretty good for another, like, an actual Hulk movie. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm counting on Hulk and, versus Wolverine, Hulk and Wolverine story. Yeah. That's the one. I'm, I'm counting on, on them to have uh, Banner, like, just be really put off by everything at the end of the song yeah. and, and, like, leave. And, they'll and then they'll introduce uh, Wolverine as a member of Alpha Flight. Wait, was it Alpha Flight, the Canadian team? Yeah. Yeah. They'll introduce him in Alpha Flight going after the mm -hmm. Hulk. And because uh, now they've got X Men universe, yeah, yeah. So they'll show they'll do something like that, and then Alpha Flight will probably get beat up, and he'll be the only one left who can do anything. But they'll run into some other mutants like that are looking for the Hulk too, because they want the technology. And Alpha Flight's just out there because they are, you know, there have been uh, reports of some giant thing. Wrecking the place. That's what I think will happen. Well, and it'll be easy to build in the Weapon X program. Yeah. Like, They'll reveal Weapon X like that. Yeah. They'll reveal the whole like path into the X-Men universe. I think I think once we have the X-Men, then we can... You know, I, I, I really just... I'm, I wish that they'd have had X-Men for Infinity War, but I'll be happy if they do like Secret Wars. And because you kind of need a bunch of members of the X-Men to do Secret Wars. Yeah. I think it's almost better that they built up Infinity Wars without X-Men and now have set up the Scroll invasion um, and the Secret Wars. Because it's like, I think the, the Scroll storyline was a complete head fake. And that's where it's like... I, I think that's a great idea, actually. I think that's a fantastic idea. Because the way they, they painted out, it was like, counter to everything that I know about scrolls. Like, yeah, what? exactly, They're like exactly. persecuted refugees? Okay, yeah. I'll buy it for now. And that's where I'm like, knowing what, but what they did... scrolls are like <laughs> notorious lying, impersonating exactly. shapeshifters. You can't trust yeah. a scroll. Yeah. What? What? Which is wondering where I'm like, the maybe the last... Um, Marvel um, things were made by a scroll who had like killed Marvel and like had switched all the shit. So I think there's gonna they're gonna figure out some way to then make us retroactively have misplaced our empathy with the scrolls and then set up the scroll yeah. invasion to well, ha actually be like, well, what I think. Okay, so what I think is gonna happen is. They're going. The scrolls that were originally, like that, are on their way back to their planet now, are going to go back and find it have been destroyed by Galactus. They don't. They won't know who who will have destroyed it. But there's going to be a scroll force who's on their way to invade Earth, and they're going to have already initiated yeah. phase two of the scroll well, the invasion. I think. I think what Captain Marvel has done really well is they have demonstrated what happens after she loses some of her powers to Rogue. Mm. Because Rogue Rogue and Mystique are going to do some shady shit mm -hmm. and Marvel's going to show up and and uh, Rogue's just going to hold on to her and try, and try and kill her but but Binary won't have it. And then that's that's how they'll retain Captain Marvel's like real power. They'll they'll change her into binary, like way ahead of schedule. I think they'll 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 reintroduce her as binary, like within you know the next movie after like because I feel like her losing powers to Rogue is like that's like the end of a movie type level. Event. Well, and I think they're setting up Monica Rambeau too. Yeah. To to then be super powerful. Yeah, so yeah. So then it's like we'll be okay with 
Danvers losing her powers or some of her powers at least. Yeah, yeah. So I think that. Well, the I, people who aren't in the know. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think that there's, I think that the the Marvel story is going to get really interesting mm-hmm. because now that that Disney has the X Men, they can they can complete a lot of those complex story arcs. Yeah. Because there's there's, <laughs> I mean, it's ambitious to do Marvel without like a complete. Marvel universe. Exactly. That's like the weirdest. That was like the, the that's that's the weirdest part. I mean, I guess they, the 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 it's like for, trying to form sentences in English without vowels. <laughs> well, it's it's, <laughs> it's it's I guess the first the introductory story works because it's it's almost completely contained within Avengers universe, but everything afterwards mm-hmm. is really relies on the complete universe. Yeah. So. I think that's the I think that's the thing that I mean I know that's where we're headed. I just I'm just hopeful that they keep the fucking good work. I mean, we've had a decade of just like really visually stunning movies. Well, movie. it started off shit. Like they, That's true, but they, they didn't used to have the formula down. That's true, they but only, they had good they had fun stories that we all wanted to see. No, they didn't. You didn't want to see Iron Man? No. Fuck no. Oh, I was I was so I happy. I did not care about Iron Like that's what I'm saying. Like uh Avengers were not people like in in general, like I'm okay. Avengers to me were not m- most people's favorite like sure. characters. It's like everybody was like X Men, yeah. fucking Batman. Yeah. You know, there's other characters and then there's like Iron Man's down here. He's like, Okay, I'll put it like this. If you were playing a video game, sometimes Iron Man had the coolest shit. But you if you had the chance to pick Vision over Iron Man, you would go with Vision. Well, duh. You see what I mean? I mean the, the, or, or, the or even like War Machine. The villain, you would pick War Machine over Iron Man in a lot of... I mean, not you, but one, because of the, the fucking weapons yeah. they had were... Like, War Machine's weapons were better. But he was slower in the, in, the, in the Marvel fighting game, in the Capcom Marvel fighting game. He was still slower than Iron Man. Oh, yeah, he was a little slower, but... His... And, and, and Iron Man's, like, super was... Just a little bit seemed like he was a little bit more capable because you know Tony would always reserve the best shit for himself, no matter what the army puts on on the war machine. Like, no, I think well, I thought I thought war machines had the biggest, like the, big, took the most out, out of anybody's. I think they had more armor and they had a greater range of munitions, but I don't. I think mean, on the game, I'm talking about on the game. Oh. I think war machine super is the one that took the most out of anybody's. Like if I'm not mistaken, I thought it was the Hulk. But, Maybe. I don't know. Because the Hulk would do that, like, crazy... He had, like, that crazy planet-busting shit going on. Mm. There were a bunch of them. My actual favorite character, like, on, on, the, on those was uh, Shuma Garath and Dan. That weird pairing, because everyone was like, Dan? But if you knew how to use Dan, like, he was actually a very deadly character. Because, <laughs> like, all of his all his attacks required that you be right up on somebody, or you'd be, like, tapping in the, the, the tag attack. The, the companion attack button sequence. Um, and the thing with Shuma Garath is, like, no one knows how to use him, so they never see it, so, that, so nobody ever plays it. So nobody actually has experience fighting somebody who knows how to use Shuma Garath. And so it's kind of like a, you have a 50-50 chance. Either this person knows what they're doing and they face somebody who's actually dealt with somebody who knows how to use Shuma Garath or they don't. And if they don't, done. You just <laughs> chaos dimension their ass and they're, and they're like, what did you just do? It's like, oh, I just won. <laughs> but but then but then if you were fighting somebody who actually knew what they were doing it was like you had to actually use Dan and the trick with Dan is let him get in real close because he actually had a bunch of really long chain sequences mm. that you could just like keep going and basically push the, the other person almost across the entire board and then you swoop and you basically charged up and at that point you swoop in Shuma Garath and Chaos Dimension and then they're done. So it was a really unique combination plus you could get like both characters being neon pink or neon green. <laughs> so it was like there was something about it, I think that was like I think there's like a psychological warfare aspect to choosing those two characters. But those are the ones that I always picked. Yeah. I'm waiting for a Shuma Garath uh, episode because that's like the most mind bending extra dimensional shit. And and it'll it allows for like everyone like Doctor Strange can get in on that and the Avengers can get in on it and mm-hmm. freaking Professor X can get in on it which means that all the X Men can get in on it even if they have no business 
dealing with some extra dimensional being. <laughs> Maybe Cyclops can get in on it, but you know, like that would be a really cool episode because that's an extremely dangerous creature that would probably have to be let through some portal opened up by a Spider-Man level villain. Yeah. So a Spider-Man level villain opens up a portal, lets in the extra dimensional being that calls forth the necessity of Doctor Strange and a few X-Men to appear, and then Avengers show up and get some butts kicked. And then Doctor Strange probably has to save the day because extra dimensional being. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because then, like, <laughs> I always felt like Avengers... Don't belong in that kind of fight? Yeah. Yeah, they really don't, but... They always felt like... How what what can any of them well Scarlet Witch yeah but like what can they really do against something something like that I guess the Hulk can try and wrestle it for a little while <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah I don't know I guess like but see I feel like a Schumagrath it would be more like a Schumagrath incident where a breach would occur or something would happen where they open up a portal and this thing crawls out and then they have to fight it off. It really only takes like 20 to 30 minutes of movie time, which is like, you know, maybe half of a day of, of pretend movie timeline. But um, by the time it's all over, you have, they've defeated or pushed the, the tentacle monster back into the, the hole, into its dimension and sealed it up. But what they don't realize is that something nastier has gotten out, mm-hmm. and it's much more tangible than a than a, a tentacle monster, and it's a it's you know some kind of abstract intelligence. I don't know how they would do that stuff. That's like that's like a leave it, have a sec, that could that's like maybe they could do that with like a Fantastic Four storyline or something. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Um, Fantastic Four has to come in somehow. Um, They're good with dealing with the extra-dimensional shit. Yeah. They, they always felt like, to me, um, not necessarily useless, but they they were always like... I felt like the Fantastic Four and the Avengers needed each other more than X-Men need anybody else. Well, you don't... None of the really interesting Spider-Man stories happen without the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Like, the Fantastic... Well, Reed Richards has to be present so Spider-Man can get some kind of technology to do something for the really, like, holy crap, like, you know, Spider-Man stories. Like, they need... He need... They need each other. Mm-hmm. So they, he has to... They have to exist at some point for that. And they have to be there for Secret Wars. Yeah. They do. They just have to. Because you can't really have secret wars without Mr. Fantastic. Marvel's got a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mr. Fantastic is never really like a, a very relatable character. Nope. So it's hard to make him himself without watering it down to make it relatable for the, for the audience. I, I think the only way to do it is to make him not relatable so yeah. that he's honest, so that it's like... So that when he when his character does the things that he does, like you know, come up with the next generation of technology right now, uh, it's got to be like Elon Musk. Yeah. On on before he has the accident. Disney, please cast Elon Musk for Reed Richards. <laughs> well, he can't be in. He's he was in Iron Man Two as himself. It doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 then he would break the continuum. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, e- it's easier than that. Elon Musk is Reed Richards. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. They rename him. No, th- that's, that's just part of his persona. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I think that, um... That is, because that's how you calculate time. Like, over a long, long period... Because numbers don't make sense yeah. when they get big enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. That's and, what I was like. And I was like, no, that's... But then we're, we're talking about beings who are, like... They can... They're basically, like, immortals. Yeah. That's where it's like, these things can be, but... It is. We like, don't actually know how Asgard, normal Asgardians age, because they've never really shown us. No. Maybe they, they're, maybe they're really long lived too. Like. Well, no, we know we know Thor is like thirteen hundred. Oh, I know, but like normal Asgardians. Like, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, sorry. Maybe they're also really long lived. Maybe, maybe, maybe instead of like a thousand years, normal Asgardian only lives like four hundred years. But that's still a long fucking yeah. time. And she's she's only been gone for a some period of time but he knew what the Valkyries were yeah so she's no she's older than that cause she was around for the for the when they you're right the hell you're right so you're she's right. older yeah, than yeah so she's older so she and she's been you're right so she can be there she can be really fucking maybe Asgardians live fucking a yeah. long fucking time yeah and, shit no we never did find out how old Valkyrie is like but but you're right she is older than so if she's older than Thor, that means she can. She's definitely long lived. Damn. So we. I don't. I don't. Think, I think my math is actually. It might be right. It like, might be. Holy well, shit! Well, but that's so where I, been the only reason that's why I was time. like. That's where. That's where I was like. It just sound like because the numbers were so high. That's why I'm like. The issue is like again we're, like. They didn't. We're not. They didn't thinking, talk about it. Yeah. So when we're like trying to think about it, we're like, this can't. I'm like, this can't be right. Like, but it might be because they're setting up Planet Hulk. You know what I mean? Like, and then we're like, we realize he was actually there for like 30 or 40, whatever, 300 years or something. Who who knows? Well, the, the, if he was there for gonna, two years, I'll, I'll, I'll find that spot in in uh, Ragnarok when. Thor gets spat out, or when yeah. when Loki leaves and count the time between then and when he when Thor gets spat out of the Bifrost. So that time we'll call that uh, D O T. And then so then there Loki's Loki uh, uh, the dimension of Loki. So Loki of D is Loki is two weeks, right? He said two weeks. I think. Well, that's that's a number that we're gonna end up multiplying by at some point because that's like the actual. That's a, that's a, one of the multipliers. Yeah. Um. And then there is how long Bruce was gone. Bruce. Wow. B. <laughs> BD. Because we know how long he was gone in the real world. Because he's gone like what two years. Yeah. Two years. So that's two. So there are thirty six hundred seconds in an hour. And there are twenty four hours in a day. And there are three hundred and sixty five days in a year. And there are two years that he's gone. That's seconds, right? No, I did multi. I already multi or divided, um, because it was like sixty-three million. Hold on, let me do it again. So this is just. Oh, okay, wait. Um, times three sixty-five times two is how many seconds? Yeah. So that's sixty-three million seventy-two thousand seconds. And then the 3,600 times 24 times 14 is the time that Loki spent there is perceived time. Well, I mean, I turn this computer on and find this stuff right now because that shit's on fucking Netflix. I want to know. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is fucking important shit, man. I'm telling you. Cause, cause then we know how much time Planet Hulk had to have. Like, was able to... This Planet Hulk right. storyline was able to... Because at some point, he conquers that planet, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then somehow the Grand Master gets back into control? Or the Grand Master appears? Well, but that's... Because he killed the prince of the fucking... Whatchamacallit on Planet Hulk. He wasn't even the Grand Master yet. There's, like, a whole bunch of layers of, like, fucked up shit that are going on that they altered to, to yeah. shoot one into the movie. Yeah. God, that's, like, such a long fucking period of time, though. I was missing a zero. The 6.3 million or 63 million? 63 million and 17. Yeah, this is zero before the. Yeah. Zero, seven, two? Yeah. Okay. And then. 52. 12 years. 12 years of real time. Yeah. 12 years of real time. Figured it out. <laughs> <Boom>! <laughs> Some like yeah. high priestess yeah. shadow warrior chick. Yeah, so this like, is whole like, whole like the line. baddest yeah. warrior woman like in the known universe, basically. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. She, like, so goes to Dude. <laughs> oh my god. So then that'll set up a whole like antagonistic thing between him and Natasha too. So I imagine they might like Yeah, if he's got a kid now that's twelve years old, basically, potentially. And we don't like, but he's only been gone two years. <laughs> he might not. Bruce might not even know. Exactly. Bruce exactly. might not even know he has a kid. Exactly. The Hulk knows. Well, it's not his kid. It's Hulk's kid. Yes, I know. The problem is even better. <laughs> and then, technically, it's not even his DNA. And, and the Hulk, or kind of. And the Hulk's baby mom will show up, and Bruce will be like, "Who are you?" And she's like, "I'm the mother of your child." <laughs> where is he? <laughs> no, no, that's all she'll say is where is he? Looking for the Hulk. <laughs> I feel like at 12 years of age, Scar should be able to, like, basically beat up anything that he wants to. But that might be a whole, like, film. Yeah. Where they're like, his mom comes in as an antagonist, and we don't know, like... She, she's his mom until and she, almost, and she like almost kills Natasha yeah exactly and then the final scene is like oh, Rambo shit. don't get rolled over <coughs> stupid cat the final scene of that film is like us finding out about Scar yeah <coughs> after, after yeah, he, like, he like walks out of a capsule looking him. around and <coughs> or after Bruce has killed his mom and then Scar is like pissed so then it becomes like Bruce versus Scar. Dude, I think we just figured out where it's going. Because <laughs> that shit would be too awesome not to do. That's, that's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot of potential for this stuff. Yeah. I mean, they, they've got such a... You know, it's, it's funny. Like, as long as they don't do a fucking ghost in the shell, they'll be fine. As long as they're close enough to, like... The, the, the central story arcs that have been I mean the storyboards have already been <coughs> already got the most refined versions of storyboards for, for this Marvel Universe that they could possibly have it's mm -hmm. all been okay by the man himself they don't need to do any reinvention of the wheel they just need to tell these stories and if they want to embellish the, the visuals while they're at it that's fine by me because they've been doing a great job mm -hmm. but like right now the stories are, are developed they don't need new details. No one's really going to be able to improve on these stories because they're already really rich in, in information. They just need to give us 
all the stories. And then we'll, we'll, our, our generation will have appro- basically approved um, the creation of the next thousand years of mythology. And we will have created new heroes to, that people can't possibly become, but will like want to embody like you know those positive attributes of, of their character. <laughs> like being human. Yeah. Totally. So, I think that I think that Stanley and Jack Kirby and that entire team, they have succeeded in in making. Uh, morality tales and allegories and and mechanisms to deliver ethics they've, they've refined this this mechanism so well that it's like you said like racists didn't even realize their kids were learning <laughs> allegories about humanity and, and compassion <laughs> that's uh, that's great I think that's fucking man 40 years later I guess 50 years later. <clears throat> yeah. I don't think I would have, um, I don't think I would, ever would have believed that they would have made Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, no way. I, like, if somebody told me to make a movie out of this someday, I would have been like, bullshit. Mm-hmm. They'll never be able to do that. This is way too fucking like crazy, and then of course we have all these like technological revolutions. It's really kind Obviously of James Cameron and Wachowskis. You know it's messed <laughs> up, man. None of this shit happened until the Matrix, and when they were re- <coughs> revealed what the Matrix does and what it can do, like that's when all this crazy visual stuff really kind of blossomed. And well, it's weird because Matrix gets the credit for it, but it was really um, Wing Commander. Yeah, that one had a lot Wing to Commander it. Wing Commander was the one that got that bullet time yeah. um, technology, but the Matrix was the one Oh, no, I'm not even it. talking about that part of it. Uh, I'm thinking more in terms of, like, the, the way that they composed uh, the visual stories. Uh, yeah. The bullet time thing was... Uh, I always I thought that stuff was really cool, but mm. we don't we're not really getting bullet time like that. We're getting slower, slow. Uh, we're getting retarded motion. Well, have you seen like um, like they did the opposite of it where now like well it's not it's not the they, they'll, thing. they'll they'll like ramp up sections to make it look like someone moves real fast and it's for a certain thing. Well, no, it's it's the exact opposite where they pause like action and then move the camera around. Oh yeah. So it's as if like the action so okay. Oh like when they have like a big field of action and they have the camera moving around in different and places. And then exactly and it'll it'll stop on frames and then the camera keeps moving and then a person might appear multiple times yeah. in different frames but never in, at the same time twice. Yeah. So you get the appearance of like a movement lot. through time with still images but moving imagery yeah so it's this like it's the opposite of like it's that's like a it's almost the opposite i don't i think that the reason that people remember the matrix and not wing commander is because the matrix did it better oh for sure and for so sure it's <laughs> well and wing commander's plot was just shit, shit yeah like, it was it was there was it was a bunch of uh it was a bunch of uh, teen movie stars who were trying to transition into a, a more complex adult yeah. genre, and they didn't—they didn't stay faithful enough to the game yeah. to get the audience that would have gone and that watched should it. Should have yeah. gone to see it. Yeah. I like played Wing Commander, you know, yeah. and then you like, saw you're like, "What is this bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> where, where are the fucking Kilrathi? These are not Kilrathi." <laughs> I don't think this is even crass. Um. Yeah, you know, there's like this whole, there's this entire realm of movies, I feel like, that were based off of games, like board games, Mm -hmm. or dice games, like, that we're not really aware of. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, uh, oh god, what was it? I can't even remember. There was a... There was a there was a movie about this kid who had a little action figurine. And he, he was basically schizophrenic because he thought there was a, a spy that he was working with to unravel some government 
federal level thing, hmm. some espionage thing, and of course the idea is that this little kid is being aided by a spy. <laughs> a reflection of his tiny figurine that he believes is real totally schizophrenic kid <laughs> dealing with probably like uncover unraveling his father's work something like, that, <laughs> like that you know that's probably the the, the actual his, uh, physical basis for that kind of, of fantasy but um god i wish it was called it's funny if they made a game based on like but i'm pretty sure that was a game or a movie based on I think there is a Connect 4 movie. <laughs> There's a Battleship movie. Mahjong. Yeah, Ma <laughs> Mahjong sounds like a, a bad Bond movie. <laughs> no, man. What, the, where did he go? When he went to Macau, that was Mahjong. <laughs> that was the Mahjong segment. Holy shit. Oh, man. Because <laughs> when he was in Montenegro, he played a different game. It wasn't. Yeah, around. that's right. That that that's like. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Well, and then they had some weird ass game in one of them where it was some digital thing where it was like. Oh God! So they were sitting at the table and it was like. The and he's getting electrocuted. Or mind or something. And I don't I forget what the fuck it was. It's something super weird. Was I mean, like, it was a real game. That was like Pierce Brosnan, though, right? That was. What no, I, was. I think it was like. Was it Daniel Craig? No, it was definitely before. It might oh. have been Timothy Moore. Oh, Roger Moore? Or Raj, Roger Moore. Uh, this is Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton, yeah. One, one of the, uh, it might have been Timothy Dalton. I mean, but both of those guys are so forgettable. I always mix them up. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I think I feel like, like Roger Moore is what would happen if you have a gay bond, and Timothy <laughs> Dalton is what would happen if you have a really just like unhinged bond. Like, one that, like, <laughs> is, like, uncontrollable and not really, like, he's, like, Bond that is completely off the rails. And I feel like, um, I feel like Daniel Craig's Bond is actually the most accurate Bond. He's, like, the more, because, like, they try, I feel like they tried to tell the Ian Fleming stories most accurately. Because a lot of the, mm -hmm. the, a lot of the Connery Bond movies that people really like, uh, they had to take a lot of liberties because they didn't have the rights to those stories. Mm. So, like, Thunderball is uh, going to be real big. They're, whoever which, whoever gets the, the mantle of Bond for Thunderball is going to be cemented as, like, the greatest Bond. Because that was, like, one of the... That was one of the Bond stories that was really un under a lot of contention, I think. Mm. And then um, You Only Live Twice was also one of those highly, hotly contended Bond stories. It was, like... It was, uh, like, a, like, I think it was, like, an interpretation of one of the, one of the, like, really important stories. So there's, like, there's actually a lot of material left before they get to the end of the Ian Fleming storylines, and uh, before it's just taken over by the Broccoli Company and it all turns into crap with Roger Moore. Um, like, Moonraker. It's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Octopussy. Oh. Yeah. A nuclear bomb, a nuclear missile, warhead, or whatever, in a fucking cannon at a circus. Really, <laughs> really, Bond. Seriously. Yeah, uh, really yeah. And with Timothy Dalton, there was like Felix gets eaten by a fucking shark, and um, <laughs> you know it's just like it's just bad. Yeah, that's the shit that like spawned Doctor Evil, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yes, we can make fun of this and create a whole subgenre of comedy based off of this. <laughs> <laughs> create, quite possibly, the greatest satire villain of all time. Yeah. Of all time. We haven't had a satire villain like Dr. Evil since, have we? Have we pretty much created the genre of 